global health policy expert Mario Otilio, who's in Geneva. Good to have you with us. A lot of excitement over the news from Pfizer yesterday about this uh, the possible vaccine. However, one of the uh, issues with it seems to be that it has to be stored at minus 70 Celsius. How difficult is that going to make it to transport it and store it? Good evening and thank you for having me. Uh, yes, this is definitely an important issue to take into account. Um, as you said, uh, we really need, uh, it seems, a super cold temperature, uh, minus 70 and, and below, which is going to make quite difficult to deliver uh, this to many places. Um, so from what we know at the moment, of course, we don't have a lot of information, but uh, this uh, vaccine seems to be able to be in ultra low temperature for up to six months or five days at, uh, let's say, normal temperature around two, eight degrees, which is quite commonly available in hospitals. Um, it seems also that the, the companies have designed some sort of suitcase sized containers that may keep the doses at quite cold temperature for up to 10 days, to 10 days. And each of these containers may hold uh, between 1,000 and 5,000 doses and may also be refilled with some ice. But of course, the point is uh, the shots will spoil in around five days and normal refrigeration temperature, making, let's say, um, you know, in inoculation quite difficult. It's a new technology uh, as well, uh, and therefore we need also a new delivery system. Uh, and that I think it's part of the of the challenge um, that um, uh, Pfizer and BioNTech have right now. Right, and and this uh, this vaccine, as I understand it, isn't part of the Covax uh, program either. So, uh, in broader terms, uh, how difficult is it going to be to distribute um, this vaccine? I know it's not the only one, but if it's the first one, how difficult is it going to be to distribute it, particularly to uh, lower income uh, countries in poorer areas? Yeah, thank you for making that point. Uh, this is this would be a challenge uh, in in low and middle income countries. I would say it's a challenge in all settings because hospitals, even in big cities, let's say in the de in developed in the Western world, do not have storage facilities for a vaccine at that ultra low temperature. So it's going to be challenging, in particular, uh, you know, when it comes to the last mile. Uh, this actually adds up to a series of other challenges in, in vaccine distribution, um, looking at you know production of other materials, legal agreements, and all the things that you need for fully country readiness, communication, training, data collection, general guidance. Uh, one important point here, uh, for this reason, I think one needs to continue supporting uh, research efforts in order to achieve a, a sort of a basket, a portfolio of options that can be adapted to local constraints. We know that uh, there are um, COVAX and, and a few other agencies are working as well to resolve that very point of lower and middle income countries because clearly, as uh, you had before with uh, uh, Dr. Tedros, um, we, we will fail if we will not achieve equitable distribution when the first one is ready. Okay, so let's imagine a perfect world where there are billions of doses of vaccine going to every country. Uh, one of the other issues is that there is a sizable percentage of every population that don't want to be vaccinated. They don't trust vaccines, um, they don't want vaccines. Do you think this vaccination should become mandatory or how do you persuade people that for the good of the world, they really ha should get this vaccine if it's proved to be safe? Uh, this is a great question. Um, let's say we learned this great news about the, the Pfizer vaccine, but we also learned that we have some homework to do because as you say, vaccine hesitancy is going to be an issue in many places in the world. And, and this can only be overcome with reliable data uh, with ultra transparency, if that's an expression, and also adequate communication. Um, for instance, I'm just thinking uh, about the side effects, right, or the possible side effect. For instance, if we have uh, ultra transparency on that, uh, in communicating about uh, the, the impact of that vaccine, that would be great, because even if there are no serious long-term complications, people feeling sick for a day or two could lead to some, you know, some to be hesitant to take a vaccine. I think, um, and I made this point earlier, uh, we need a, a sort of a um, all of a community approach when it comes to adequate communications as well. Um, we have seen often uh, authorities not speaking with one voice where you had the scientist saying something and the politician saying something else. Uh, we need to make sure 
that we ensure a stream that is coherent when it comes to communication and talking to the people to have them empowered with the right information. And, and you know, like, as you say, really like, um, act everybody towards the direction that we want to go, which is getting rid of this and, you know, restart our life as it was before. Well, let's hope. Mario, thank you very much indeed for that. Mario Otilio there.